If you Google a lip biopsy, it can look pretty invasive, although I don't, it, it is considered minimally invasive. And so many patients are really intimidated by that procedure. And when we say seronegative, those are the folks who have no diagnostic test available, and we usually have to do, we have to do a lip biopsy to diagnose them. And so our test takes uh, out the need in a subset of patients for that lip biopsy. So we can avoid the procedure, um, having to find providers to do it, having to find providers to interpret it. We can just, you know, hopefully perform a bl simple blood test. Hi, I'm Victoria Sutton, an IP manager at Wharf. And I'm Jennifer Gottwell, Director of Licensing. We'd like to congratulate Sarah McCoy, Michael Newton, Miriam Shalef, and Zahao Zhang for being 2022 Wharf Innovation Award finalists. They've developed a new test for Sjogren's Syndrome. This disease can currently take up to seven years to diagnose. The new test that they've developed has eliminated the need for painful lip biopsies. We really look forward to our continued collaboration on this project and wish them the best in the awards competition. Hi, I'm Sarah McCoy. I'm an associate professor with the Division of Rheumatology, Department of Medicine. We know that about a third of folks will experience dryness at some point in their lives. And dryness, particularly when severe, can lead to marked reduction in quality of life. So imagine if you're trying to cry and no tears come out, or you're trying to eat your favorite food and you can't chew or swallow it, or trying to communicate, you can't talk normally. So we know severe dryness markedly impacts quality of life. And in a subset of these patients who have severe dryness, they also might have an autoimmune disease called Sjogren disease. And that's the disease that I study is Sjogren disease. How do you distinguish between dryness and Sjogren disease, which is what you know we study? And the answer in 70% of people is a blood test. Simple blood test called an anti-SSA antibody. There's around 30% of people where the blood test doesn't catch the disease. And right now in those patients we perform something that's commonly known as a lip biopsy. Many patients are really intimidated by that procedure. Um, there are other two major barriers to getting this lip biopsy done. One is finding somebody who can do it because a small subset of practitioners can do it. And two is finding a pathologist who can actually interpret the results because a small subset of pathologists do this. Finding new biomarkers for Sjogren's was one of the major um, uh, areas of deficit or need identified in the Sjogren's community. And that's what we sought to try to address with our technology. To address this gap, we use something called a whole peptidome array. So we have every human peptide at 16 amino acids, tiled every two amino acids across the whole human peptidome. And so that's where we used a new biostatistical approach in order to winnow down to what we thought were the most relevant bound peptides on the array. For validation, what we did is we synthesized the same peptide sequence that we identified on the array, and then we put that onto an ELISA, and we added uh, patient serum. Now, we didn't just add any patient serum, so we actually had three types of samples we put uh, in our validation cohort. So one is seronegative, or SSA antibody negative Sjogren's, and then we had blood from patients who had sort of autoimmune features, um, like abnormal blood tests, but they didn't meet criteria for Sjogren disease. And then we also had patients who were dry, so they had dry symptoms or signs, but they didn't end up having any features of autoimmunity. And that's how we verified or validated the findings. And then we found when we combined these um, peptides that were bound more in seronegative Sjogren's um, into a, a sort of pool that we could really generate a nice panel of tests that had good diagnostic accuracy for seronegative Sjogren disease. Patients who are blood test negative really don't have many options for getting a diagnosis that are easy. There are a group of folks who have developed something called a show panel. And the problem is that this actually doesn't pan out diagnostically in a real life population. We are trying to use our panel to really fill the gap in a way that is meaningful to patients.